and welcome to another live demonstration. Today I want to introduce you to the new Derwent Lightfast pencils. So I've heard people going, well, what are these? Because Derwent brought out Pro Colour recently. Now, with coloured pencils, you do find that some colours are not as lightfast as others. Violets often, some greens, some blues, which is not always been a problem with coloured pencils because a lot of coloured pencils are used for illustrators and in sketchbooks. But coloured pencils are becoming a big favourite with professional artists who want to display their work. And if they use a colour that fades within five years, it's not really helpful for them. So Derwent have worked really hard and brought out this light fast set. At the moment there's 36 colours and they have all been tested to be um, six and above um, in the light fast scale range, which is, they have an archival property of about 100 years under museum conditions. So they have really good light fast properties. So you don't have to pick and choose which colour you may or may not use because of its light property past properties, you can just use them all. These are oil-based coloured pencils. And again, people ask what's wax-based and oil-based. To be honest, a lot of wax-based coloured pencils have oil in them, um, but they have more wax than they do oil. And they're often quite hardcore and they're really nice for very fine detail. Wax um, coloured pencils, again, I mean oil coloured pencils, sorry, again, may have some wax in them but then predominantly more oil. And I find these very, a little bit more soft and great for blending. But a lot of people, you know, it's totally preference. So first thing I've done is have a look at the color chart. And this color chart shows me the colors. It shows me the light fast properties, which I knew anyway. Shows that they're all vegan, so suitable for vegans. Um, and it just tells me um, which colors are in which set. So it is a really useful tool to download colour charts off supply websites and most of them will have them really readily. But what I also do is I do my own because the printed colour charts don't always give you a full representation of the colour you're going to use. Neither do the ends of the pencils. So you have the pencils, just going to, and the colour doesn't always match so you have this lovely color here but again it's due to the printing and the color they have available it doesn't mean it's going to come out exactly the same as the pencil so i do my own it doesn't take long but also it gives you the quality of the pencil you can feel how it works so i've put down all the colors in this 36 set putting it on i could feel how smooth it is a little oily that kind of painterly effect I like to put the pigment numbers on, just for information. To be honest, I'm not overly bothered with colour. If it looks like it's okay, it looks like it's okay. That's just me. But I know a lot of people um, like to look at the pigment colours in their paints or their pencils. So all 36. And then I have a little play just to see um, how good they are at layering. So I've put white on top of this um, I think that's a teal colour or a turquoise colour. Then I use solvent for blending. Not that I would do it in the demonstration, but just to have a little play, just a little test. You learn the pencils the more you use them, to be honest. Blaring by layering. And what I did find was they went on really quite creamy and laying was really, really nice and creamy. You got some really nice effects. Also wanted to see how well they actually came off the paper if I had to lift off and I chose a dark colour and it came off fairly well. I didn't want to rub the paper too much. I'm using just some off cuts of watercolour paper to be honest just because it gives me that stable um, board but try it on different papers see how they work and then this was blending again but using the Derwent Blender Pen which I think is alcohol based so you have solvent based here and alcohol based here just to see how they work. And I was going to do tortillion, but obviously I've not done it. I forgot. Um, but I can tell by the creaminess how nicely they do blend together. So like I say, the best way to work with pencil is actually to do something. So I'm going to do 
a little bit more detailed drawing than I often do because I often just put colours on quite quickly. And I'm just going to see the qualities. So you have 36 colours in the range, which as much as the range is really nice, it doesn't have all the colours, it doesn't have an orange. So I'm going to have to use blending techniques in order to get that colour. So let's start with looking at just putting some colours on just again it will just often tell me where I'm going. Now with coloured pencils you do find you will use a lot of colours. As much as you can blend, you don't always, you're not always able to change a colour. So I'm putting the yellow on and you'll see I'm also looking at the direction of the, I'm not sure they're veins in the wing, but you'll see little lines in the wing and they're all going in that direction. It just helps it to look a little bit more realistic. Going to go for a, not a black, this is the nightshade and it's a, it is a blackish colour but it has a slight bit of blue in it so it's very dark blue. And at the moment I'm doing it quite lightly and I'm just putting on colours, it's helping me map um, where areas are and some people will do each area at a time but I like to jump around a little bit so just bringing out some brown just so it's not so black and every time I'm just looking at where the colour is what I do know is I can go back in and start to build up I don't want a thick layer on at the moment some brown here Okay, let's go in with the red now. So like I say, there isn't an orange at the moment, so I'm going to have to use red and yellow. And even on this first blending, it may not be the colour I'm looking for, because I'm looking for some different tones. So very lightly at the moment. I do know you can put this colour on quite strongly in one go and I'll show you that later. What I want to do, you can see just touches of blue here. So this, I have looked it up, is a tortoiseshell butterfly and from my own image as I do try to use a lot of uh, my own images or I beg around and ask people for images and they're often very happy to um, let me use images that they've taken on their holidays or so this isn't quite sharp enough so I'm just going to use the Derwent long point sharpener I'm just doing it gently because it already had a long point I just want that extra bit of sharpness so this is a really lovely um, tool for coloured pencils. It gives you that really long point, even with pastel pencils. If you take a little bit more care, very slowly um, turn the handle and don't allow it to be in for long. Keep taking it out for testing, but soft pastel pencil can also be sharpened. That's a little better. And when I'm using a pencil, I will also turn it in my hand this helps to keep the tip sharper for longer rather than just flattening and flattening an end it's got yellow bits here a little bit more yellow so like i say this is going to be quite a lot of layering just to get this orange color i'm looking for but i don't know if you can see but i'm already quite easily getting those lovely line structures that you find in the wing. It's quite orange down here. It might be being a little soft, but I just want that colour. So back with the yellow, just to 
add a little bit more pigment. So the great thing about coloured pencils is you can faff with them. You can keep playing with them. You can keep going in and adding colour because that's your layering techniques just enable you to be able to do this. Okay, so this is quite red here. It's red here. A lot more yellow here, so let's see if I can bring out some of the yellow coming through. So keep layering with the colours I have. Right, let's go here. So this is quite dark. So now I can just start to add. I'm just looking at details. I can see. Because I think when you've got a close-up like this, you will be able to see the detail a little bit more so just looking at the shape and now I'm starting to push on a little bit more and you can see how easily the colors going on that edge of that wing is not solid it has some detail Let's add this again I'm turning my pencil just to ensure that I'm keeping as sharper edge as I can. So go back in. Just look at where I can add some more orange. Oops. Tend to hold on to my pencils, so tell me if they're in the way, Gary. I don't know why, but you just feel like they're a kind of a comfort instead of putting them down. Okay, so coming down here, I'm constantly just looking, reviewing. I want detail in, but I don't want to get overwhelmed with too much detail, to be honest. Stand back. Okay, I'm going in here because you can see it's got a little darker, so I'm using natural brown and this isn't too sharp and I'm keeping that not too sharp on purpose just so I, I've got a much softer um, feel right. edge needs a little bit of work but you can see how you just build up you keep building up and I can go back in and rework. So just bringing out this line. So you will find that you do gather up a lot of coloured pencils, a lot of different colours, because you do need them. But the thing I like about these oil-based ones is a great blendability. Okay. Back in, left that quite brown. And I can I know I'm quite comfortable going back in and looking re-looking. I have done this before to have a practice, but I can't remember what colours I use. So I'm just bringing out colours that I feel will be right. So the butterfly has a really soft body with lots of I think if it's going to be the same as a um, bee it's going to be called pile but they're really wonderfully fluffy so I'm just going to use my pencils to show a really soft f thin fine detail in here and much more um, textured in the body. I'm doing tipping my pencils out of their case just because I can see I'm looking at the colour of the put some down now uh, the actual um, tip 
because it's not always the same. Now this is called chocolate, which is always a good colour. And I'm just bringing that detail. Now I've taken this photograph and I'm quite pleased with it, but I can't really see completely all the detail. So I'm not, I have tried to look it up on the internet to see what detail I should have, but you're not going to see a butterfly as close up anyway. So let's just kind of work out where the body will be. So just adding that soft area and I can see there that it's a little lighter. So let's just put some more colour on. It's amazing how many colours you can think of to put on. So it doesn't have to be just all browns. I could put a bit of blue, a bit of red in it. That's the joy of um, creating your own work. You just can do what you want. The image is mine, but no one else has seen it. So. Anita, yes. I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, Daft Bat Nanny 53. Hello. Uh, I would like to know uh, what paper you're using. Oh, the paper. This is the Strathmore grey toned. So it's in a, I can move it. Gary has allowed me to move it, but I don't think it was for this reason. Um, yes, it's the Strathmore toned pad. I love the colour of the background. So you get this in tan and tone, which is brilliant for this black and white kind of work. But I like it for coloured pencils because I'm not always overly interested in a background. And it's already given me a background colour anyway. So this is really lovely. It says medium surface, but I find it quite smooth. Um, this is the 118 gram. There is a 300 gram, which I'll be showing in a couple of weeks, which is much thicker and great for mixed media work. But yes, it's easy to rip out. It's an easy, nice little pad. You can see I've been playing with it. So I've got Shall we do some hellos? Hellos. Uh, bonjour from uh, Claudine. Bon bonjour, Claudine. Uh, Graham in Peterborough says hello. Hello, Graham. Uh, Daft Bandit, Daft. Back Nanny, who just asked you a question, is in Aylesbury. Hello, in Aylesbury. Uh, I'm Nor not... Norman's in Scotland. Wow, Scotland. Uh, and Sarah's in Northumberland. Northumbria, Northumberland. So we're pretty UK based this morning. UK, right? yeah. We haven't got the international artists um, that we sometimes get. But hello to you all, and I hope you enjoy this. What I'm not doing is I'm not doing a comparison to other pencils. A lot of People do that and that's fine, but what I want to do is show you the pencil qualities on their own without saying, well, they differ from these um, by doing this. What I like is they've got a lovely soft quality that I can feel when I'm adding the colour on. I know I can layer, which I like. So I'm not comparing it to other pencils because each pencil has different qualities. And I'm, I don't always find it necessary to compare. So they're available in tins and sets of 36, 24 and 12, or they're individual, you can buy them as individuals. So you can start to add to your range slowly, or go for the plunge and have a wonderful set. So this is the champagne. Now, champagne is a colour I will actually use quite a lot because it's that lovely ivory colour. What I'm going to do is I have found that, as with other pencils, if you put the light colour down first, it will often resist the um, top layer and that makes some really lovely qualities. So you can't see it at the moment, I can just see it, but very light yellowy brown and ochre will do. You can see here all I need to do is just go over and see how that brings out those lighter 
qualities really easily. I'm all for making the work easy for yourself. So let's continue these lines it through. Even with the dark area. Just making sure you add that little bit of detail that helps. I can see brown here. It's going to be darker. I'm just talking to myself. I'm just thinking about what I'm going to do next. So this wing is very smooth and I'm just giving that chocolate where's my midnight detail and you can see I'm just jumping around adding colour keep going back over if I don't feel I've put enough in there Jump around. add some lighter that wasn't really what I was looking for just pick up some of these. I've got some bit of buff colour here. Now, Anita. Yes. I know you didn't want to compare them to other pencils. Yes. But I have a question. Okay. Uh, whether oil based coloured pencils layer better than wax based ones? I find they're softer. So, yes. Um, layering without using a medium. But I do find that the wax-based ones will work well with a medium, so like pencil blend or um, solvents. I find you get a little bit more movement with the wax-based ones than I did with the oil bows. Again, that could be paper-based. It could be dependent on the paper. The paper could be gripping. I was using a watercolour paper. It could be that. Um, and all these are factors, but... With the oil base, I can feel that creaminess of them. Um, but it depends on what you're looking for, what style you're looking for. So you can see I'm just adding colour very lightly at the moment. What I'll do is I'll show you that real creamy colour. I'm just looking at where the dark areas are coming down. So I can keep... So using the light application, just a lot of it to plan and plot, because I can't see my lines anymore, they've gone. So this is, again, very dark. Just looking at what I do know is I've got antennae, don't know what they're called, coming over here. And if I put this lighter colour on, I can bring those out without losing them. Again, turning my pencil. But you can see by just drawing a line over the yellow, it actually stays there. Might be hard. Sorry. I need the, to lean forward for the detail. Eyes are going to be dark. That's eyes. And I think they've got some sticky out bits, I'll call them. I think they're called. I'm not sure what they're called, to be honest, but they have some features in their face. So just running that dark pencil along where I added the yellow, it just shines through. I'm not sure you can see it, but I can. So sometimes it's a really nice trick to put down um, a layer of light colour, and then you have those details coming out really easily and quickly. So I'm just darkening it off. So, though I have features, I'm not overly exaggerating them. It is much darker and it goes into here. So I'm coming down with a light pencil. So, a lot more detail I'm thinking about. Thinking about texture. Right, I'm going to put the legs on because they're part of this shape. They have a bit of a knobbly knee. So you're just looking for those little details and it attaches to the body, so I need to make sure that it does. And this leg is here, has a little yellow kneecap. Look 
coming down a little foot holding on so here I know is the tongue and then looking at this it has another leg you can see coming out there now let's look at the darkness where uh, can I darken off very dark here so let's darken this off So just by layering, I'm beginning to bring out details. And this isn't black. Maybe I will go in for the black. Normally I wouldn't put the black on till later, but what the way I'm working is I'm working downwards. So it's just darker, and that black has a little bit darker than the um, midnight I was using. So, can't actually see where the detail is in this area, so I'm, I'll make it up. Right, brown. So let's just plot and plan. So what I'll do is I think I will finish the um, tortoiseshell butterfly, and then I maybe do a couple of these flowers. We'll have a short break because we colour pencils. That you, you can't really rush it. You just keep working at your own speed so i'll give you a little bit of a break and then we'll come back and i'll finish off depending on how much time i've got left i can keep this as loose or as tight as i want but it's the detail is in the butterfly this is where the focus is all i'm doing is looking at the darker areas and the shape because i want to come back in here and you can see all you, you do is you, you keep looking around, you keep looking at other colours that you need to add and textures you need to add. Midnight. So let's darken this up, let's soften. So start to put the pencil on a little stronger, a little harder pressure. But I'm not doing it oh. solid. Yes, Gary. Uh, have you got any butterfly facts for us? Because you usually think it's facts. Because I have one butterfly I, fact. I, the butterfly fact is, I know this is a tortoise shell because I checked that. Uh, my uh, butterfly fact yes. is that their ears face backwards. So they've got ears? They've got ears that face, well, their sensors, if you like, face backwards so that they can hear any, come in. any creatures oh. coming behind them. I, to be honest, I did look. Um, where I was looking, I couldn't find a huge amount of detail um, that I could remember. Um, that's really interesting. I love these little facts. This is why I usually take a little bit of time just to find out about what you're drawing, because it just makes it more interesting. So let me stand back. I think what I'm going to do, put these right the right way, and then I can see what colour I'm looking for, this one. Let's just add a little bit of brown. So this is a little brighter than you're seeing, but I think it works. So my pencil's getting a bit blunt, but I'm not too worried about that. Right, now start to layer, start to darken, make it look smoother. So this is a very soft kind of application. Okay, let's go in here. Let's darken with the brown. So this I'm using as a layer. And you can see as I start to put it on a lot stronger, how well it goes on. And it is brown there. Now bring that dark through. I need to add it into here because it wasn't giving me that even look I was looking for. So this is probably a lot quicker than I would normally work. I'd normally take a little bit more time just to keep focusing and keep looking back, reshaping and getting a little bit more detail, which is the great thing about using coloured pencils. But we need to push on a little bit. So I'm still looking, constantly looking at the dark shapes and making sure I'm bringing out key features. 
this is back with the brown that's too light and with the chocolate again it's midnight if I turn them around I can see there you go chocolate so this is the great thing I can layer now if I start to really add that bit more pressure I can start to darken start to sharpen which is on the wings they are quite sharp and detail right let's start to sharpen now and you can see here how you can still see the body but I'm just going to add a little bit more color okay let me just do a couple of um the flowers from i know this is a buddleia because it's in my drive i have to the car beeps at it every time it goes near it because it thinks it's too close because i've got one of those sensors on but i ignore it so i haven't got the orange so using the yellow just to give me some orange and actually I think here there's some um, orange stems of the original flower just put that color on so I'm looking now this is a bit too even so I'm just going to try and break it up by adding I suppose it will be quite even really because um, that's how the flowers grow, they grow in clusters. But I'm just trying to look as a drawing how this works and how I can um, work with it. So I'm going to go here. Oops. And I'm just putting this colour on quite strongly because it's the colour works. So this is the fabulous, and this is where I can add detail and keep. So a lot of this will be just done, putting this colour down. Then I can put layer on, and I can tone, and I can light them. So I picked out some of the key shapes I could see the rest of it I've kind of made up as long as I get those key shapes it will give you the idea so at the first it looks a little bit for me uncontrolled and this is just one way of working but I'm getting the color down a lot lighter now the color is all over so I've put it down strongly in areas that I want it to be. Make sure it catches some of these. And you can see just by changing the pressure how you can change the colour you're working with. So all done with the one colour. Because I've got that beautiful background as well, you can see it's already got plenty of tonal values. Just filling out the space with a layer. I will darken and I'll soften. Keeping the pencil actually quite blunt, just because it gives me that um, easy coverage. Easy creamy coverage, I will say. A bit harder there soften as it goes into the distance so literally just covered with that one color and even if I left it at that you would see that that is a buddleia but I'm not going to so what I'm going to do is as I recommend anyway I'm going to take a short break because I'm focusing on it and I've probably missed little areas that just need some detail so we'll take a short break I can have a look and then we'll come back and we'll finish with um, some little bits of detail
Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalogue with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration for the magazines, to be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seemed like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it. Hello and welcome back. I've had a chance to have a quick look and I can see there's a little bit more detail I want to add. But before, before we do this, Gary says I've got some hellos to say. Yes, so we've got, uh, apologies for the pronunciation, Minoj or Minoj? Minoj or Minoj uh, from Nepal. Nepal, wow, that's some distance. There we go. Uh, and Carol's watching near LA. Carol from LA, that's uh, again the other side. And Kim is in Vermont. Kim is in Vermont, so I mean, we, we are international. We are international. Obviously, we bit early for the it, people oh, yeah, in other. Uh, to be honest, I am always very humbled and honoured by those people that actually take the time to get up at odd hours well, in about, the morning. It's about half three in LA, so. Yeah, that, that's fine. But we have people who are dedicated. No, it's half three in the morning. Half three in the morning. Whoa, <laughs> that's dedication. You see, Gary didn't clarify that. That is true dedication, and um, I'm I'm quite humbled by that. It's quite a bit of dedication. Okay, let's get on with some drawing. That's that's the easy bit. Okay, I'm just going to put some detail in because it was bothering me. A nice sharp pencil. So here, just add those little bit sharper detail. And this is a great thing about this. I know I can. Your head. Hurry. I can just add these tiny details so you can see how detailed you can get. Let's follow that through. Oh, one more hello. Hello. Uh, Heather is watching in Mississippi. Hello in Mississippi. Okay. So, okay, I will move on because I will keep spending a lot of time right so i used that color that color and that color right now i'm going to because i put a layer of this down it gave me a nice creamy base like i keep saying about these pencils they have a lovely creamy quality so i want to now start to look at a bit of shading so going to keep going back and forth with my colours. I don't know if you saw that, but that blends fabulously. Okay, let's put some colour on here. You can see how s that really blends. Can you see that, Gary? Yeah. Was that a yeah, or a can, or a will? Yeah, yeah. yeah, a can. <laughs> okay, so just bringing out some dark areas, a bit of, and I find that what I'll do is I will use a lot of the original colour to go back in and blend and really start to, look at that, that's fab. Left, but it's my holding hand. It's my hand for holding pencils. Just add 
pushes these forward a little bit. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I want to darken the middle of that a little bit. Okay, I'm, I'm fluffing around, I know I am. Let's get my pencils set up and let's crack on. Okay, so a bit darker here. So using that purple for pressure and taking the colour round. Just, I'm not overly thinking about where the dark areas are. I'm, I'm using my, to be honest, instincts about what looks right. So it's quite shadowed here. Some nice shadow here, but with a little bit more light. So. Like I say, I can have a little bit more loose, be a little bit looser over here. Again, just softly. So the strong in the front, softer in the back, just using that blending quality. Just to give me a little bit more. Let me darken. Let me go in with the dark and I can come back again. Keep that. This is why I'm jumping around. I'm actually kind of using a little bit more of my instinct. Still looking at the original image just to see to give me clues about where it does look better to be darker but to be honest a lot of it I am going to don't like to say wing it but create it myself wing it, wing it. <laughs> no it wasn't but no, I'm glad you can stay on the ball okay right so a lot of this is plotting I'm thinking about what actually will look better if I add the darker areas. You can see this is coming together. Still maybe a little bit rough, but it's going to be those blending techniques that will bring it all together. So let's go back in. Look how that creates that lovely darker violet. So like I say, a really great chance to just keep working and overworking and keep working and then add a little bit more, which I know we keep saying don't do it with other mediums because they will kind of work themselves. But when you're using a medium like this that you can, it's actually quite fun. Little bit guilty, keep thinking, am I overworking it? But you just know that you can go back in. So a little bit darker here. So lots of layers. Darker here. So making sure I can go into the body. Just adding a little bit more darkness. So let's focus on here, white, just pick out some of those edges. So like I say, I'm going to just keep an eye on the clock, I think it's not going too badly at the moment. And just make sure, see how much detail I can actually put in in the time. I have, because I'm sure you don't want to just keep watching me constantly playing with the colour. Okay. Let's go darker here. If you look at the shape of the flower and kind of 
make notes on the shape. So I know these have the four leaves and they're kind of in that kind of shape. What it can do is you kind of think about the shape you're making. So you don't do that same image all over, but you think, well, there's a leaf, so the other leaves must be around here somewhere. Let's put this bit in shade. And it's just observing. A lot of drawing is not the drawing process. It's actually the observation. It's how well you've observed what you're drawing. Um, so just look for key features. Make sure that they're brought out. And they're the ones you're going to look for. I think this is working OK. Again, just go in with a little bit harder just to soften and blend. I want to make sure this leg is on a dark area. Just making sure everything is sitting. Stand back, work over here. So I'm working quite softly. And then just to get that much creamier feel, pushing down and blending. I think I can put some light on here. Let's have the light hitting. I actually quite like that looseness over here. I might not work on that. I might work on this and have some detail here. with a lot looser in the background. That's nice, look at that colour, really pick up. So just jumping around, this is just my butterfly brain thinking about, butterfly brain, <laughs> um, thinking about my lights and darks. Anita, yes. I have a question for you. You do. I do, well from, not from me, from Graham. Okay. Uh, Graham is asking uh, which pencils you would recommend for beginners. Uh, pens pencils like these or maybe pastel pencils, especially for learning blending. Okay. Now, if you were asking me which colour I would recommend for a beginner, I usually recommend a watercolour pencil. The reason being is you have that fantastic pencil quality but you have that other quality of being able to add water to it and add even more techniques. If you're looking for, it's difficult to say because pastel pencils are much softer. They're often a clay based um, with pigment. And again, it depends on the paper you use, how well they blend. But a pastel pencil will blend that nice soft blending. You'd dusty blending, I'd call it. Whereas with coloured pencils, um, they have the kind of a painterly blending. But like I've said, these blend fabulously together. Whereas wax pencils, I find blend really nicely with a pencil blend. So it's difficult to say, but Start with a good quality pencil, an artist quality pencil. Um, it may, they may be a little bit more, but what they'll do is give you that really good pigment quality of putting down the pencil rather than some of the cheaper alternatives, which you, you don't get that really nice quality of the pencil. You get colour, but you may have to keep working at it and it doesn't give you that instant quality. And it's the same with a lot of products. Get the best you can afford. Um, so, like I say, it's difficult to say, but a good set of even 12 coloured pencils will set you off. They give you the good basic colours. You can learn to blend. You can learn how the colours work. You can learn on what papers they work best on. Um, like I say, I like this coloured paper. I like the tonal value it gives me. It gives me a background, which I don't need to think too much about. Okay. A little bit of darkness here. So you can see I will just keep working on this and keep going until I'm happy. 
and that's the great thing about coloured pencils. A bit of light, so let's see if I can catch the light here. Maybe a little bit there. So this white is really opaque and able to cover and just bring out some of these lovely touches. Again, I can't always see with the studio lights. So it sometimes comes as a surprise when I take it outside and have a look at. Okay, I think that's working okay. I'm not going to keep fiddling anymore. What I am going to do is just add a little bit of background. So I've got some greens. Okay, so I can see one of the spiky leaves of the Bodleia. Putting down the yellow, maybe a little bit. And I'm going to do this quite lightly. I'm not going to over focus. There's not a bright green, so that's why I've put a layer of um, the yellow down. The greens I find are a little bit muted. And you, I'm very, very, very softly working on this. It's not as bright as I would, oh, that's better, I would like. But I don't want it to be um, overly obvious. All I want to see is that it's just not an isolated shape. adding a little bit of detail and again you can work on this it's at the moment it's just going to be a very quick bit of detail a little bit of brown so that softer touch just kind of pushes it into the background i've lost a bit of detail here so easy put that back Again, I'm just kind of looking at the colours in the background, but not overly focusing on them. Just give us a little bit of shape. And okay, this is quite dark at the back, quite green. So if I ha did have more time, I would focus on this a little bit more Oops, a bit of color I'm purposely making it quite loose trying to keep my pencils quite soft That's why then I haven't sharpened these ones at the moment because it gives me that much softer. So just blending gently, adding a little bit of colour, maybe sharpen a little bit in some areas, give me some tonal values. Just keep layering until you're happy. I've got no real shape here that possibly hasn't been as successful as I wanted, but I'm going to add some of this fabulous blue. I'm going to just put it on and in some areas be a little bit stronger, in other areas a lot softer. We go nice and strong down here. So just using the edge. It's just catching the blue there. I don't want to cover the hole. I want it as a drawing. But I don't think this works properly here. Okay, just now giving that a little bit more structure and shape.
and I'm going to darken. So just constantly looking and seeing where I can improve. Okay, not too much. Put some of that white in just to soften and brighten to be honest it does brighten the blue a little bit okay so to be honest, I would spend a little bit more time, I would add more detail, I would look at the background a little bit more. But hopefully you can see the wonderful, <laughs> I've got them all out of the tin, the wonderful creamy quality and the layering quality and the detail you can achieve from the new light fast colours. And like I say, the, the oil base, so nice and creamy, but they're light fast. All those colours are light fast, so I have no problem putting these violets on and I can put it in a frame and I know that they have a hundred years archival property under museum conditions but I'm not going to be looking at it in a couple of years going that colour's really faded. So this is the great thing I can just pick up this whole set and it's light fast. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you keep your eye out for the new Dermot light fast colours um, and I hope you get a chance to play with them like I have and join us later in the week for a live workshop with Joe Dowden.